Hey there, it's Jamie again, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use a moving average forecast with a span of three. We'll finish up by plotting our forecast against the actual data, and we'll talk about how it looks. In the next video, I'll show you how to assess the quality of your forecast by calculating the mean absolute error, the mean average percentage error, and the root mean squared error. Um, and then we'll have a sense of how good our forecast actually is. All right, so let's get started. So we've got the same data that I used in the earlier video on plotting data. And we made a plot of that data and it looked like this. Now we're going to do a moving average forecast with a span of three. So in my Excel spreadsheet, I've got my months, January 2010 to February 2018. And I've got thousands of houses sold per month. I'm going to add a few more columns and I'm going to label them here. For now, actually, I'll just start with the forecast and the error. In the next video, we'll calculate the absolute error, the squared error, etc., etc. So you've got some space for that. All right, so a moving average three forecast means that a forecast for any period is calculated simply as the average of the three periods that came before. So if I want to forecast houses sold, I'm going to forecast the number of houses sold based on the average of the three months that preceded it. So my first three months of the data set, I can't forecast because I don't have three periods. So I'm gonna start here in my fourth month and I'm going to say that my forecast for April, this part is a historical forecast because I know what the actual data was. I'm going to call this average equals average of the previous three months. And that number is 354.00. Make sure that in all of these numbers, in all of your cells, you have them formatted as a number with two decimal places. All right, so once you've got that forecast in your first cell that you can forecast, April of 2010, you double click in that corner and Excel will populate the historical forecasts for all available data. Excellent. The thing is, is that we have a historical forecast that we can use to assess the quality of the forecast, which is part of the battle, but the real part of the battle is forecasting what's coming in the future. And so to do that, we need to create some dates that are in the future, and we need to make a forecast that's in the future. Excel will carry forward this monthly pattern of data if you highlight a handful of cells and then drag the column down. And in fact, I want to forecast a year of data, so I'm going to drag this down until it says February 2019. And now I'm going to create a forecast. To use moving averages to forecast the future, we're going to do this in two steps. We're going to start by calculating a forecast in the column of actual data. We are then going to copy it and paste it special into the forecasted data. Let me show you why. The forecast for a moving average is just the previous three months. In fact, we have that formula in these cells. If I drag it down, it will calculate a few of them, but it can't calculate past a certain point because there's no data, right? So how we're going to address that is the first few forecasts are going to be based on actual data, but then the rest of our forecasts are just going to be based on forecasts. Let me show you how. I'm going to average the three previous periods because I'm doing a moving average three that has a span of three. And then I'm going to drag it down. Just to make sure that I don't get confused that this is actual data, I'm going to highlight it in red. And if I click any of the numbers, you'll see that it averages the three periods before. 
So now we're forecasting based on a forecast, and that's going to basically yield forecasts that no longer use real data. It's, you're kind of going to look like a straight line. So I don't want these in the actual column. I really want them in the forecasted column. So I'm going to copy them, Command C. Then I'm going to paste special. And I want to take the values and the number formatting. I don't want to take the formulas. So now they're pasted. I made them red. And I'll get rid of these original ones. Now I've got a historical forecast in black where we know actual values. And then I've got my forecast for real in red because I don't know what those values are in the future. So let's take a look at how this looks if we plot this data and our forecasts. I'm going to highlight all of the data. I'm going to scroll back up. Then I'm going to insert a chart, and I'm just going to try to do a recommended chart and see what it comes up with. And that one is beautiful. And it needs some things, although it does look pretty good. Look at how all the dates are, about two per year, and formatted correctly. We need to give this a title. And I'm just going to call this Forecast and Original Observations. And then I'm going to make a little dash so that you can see what forecast this is. And I'm going to label the forecast MA with a span of three, an MA3 forecast. Here on our y-axis, we've got houses sold in thousands, but we don't need those two decimal places. So I'm going to format the number, number, format axis. Then under number, I'm going to switch this to zero decimal places. Great. Then I'm going to label that axis, and I'm going to call it good. monthly house sales in thousands. Perfect. All right. That was a lot of rigmarole to take a look at this chart or to create this chart, but I want to spend a second. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because I want to talk about what we see. First, we can see that the forecast lags behind movements in the original data for houses sold. If we see a high blip in the original data, it will be followed by a blip in the moving average forecast, and that's because the forecast averages the periods that came right before it. When the data dips, our forecast will dip. In that sense, a moving average 3 forecast often follows the peaks and valleys, the ebbs and flows of the real data, quite well. And if we think that those ebbs and flows are going to continue into the future, it makes a relatively good sense to use that type of forecast. Note here that once the actual data stops in February 2018, our forecast basically is going to become a horizontal line. This reflects the fact that moving average forecasts work best not when there's a trend in the data. Our data here is trending upward, but once we stop having actual data, our forecast is going to be horizontal. It's going to look more like the base series that we talked about or that the book talks about. So moving average three or any moving average forecast isn't going to work well with trending data like the data that we have. In the next video, we'll talk about calculating the errors the mean error, the mean absolute deviation, the root mean squared error, and the mean average percentage error, so that we can really quantify the ways in which a forecast does and doesn't work well on historical data and estimate which will work best in the future. All right, happy calculating, and I'll see you in the next video.